At the inaugural hearing of this subcommittee in 2019, I noted it was created to focus on economic opportunity and fairness, consumer health and safety, and the overall quality of life. That's why our activities included investigations into price gouging in the shipping and food sectors, the infant formula shortage, neurotoxins in baby food, workplace harassment, the youth vaping epidemic, and especially relevant now, inflation and rising prices. Today, we're delving into the question of consumer safety as well as overall quality of life by examining why a product linked to numerous pet deaths and other negative side effects rem remains on the market. That product is Alonco Corporation's Soresto Flea and Tick Collar. Today, our subcommittee has released its report on the Soresto Collar and how both Elanco and the EPA, which regulates the Soresto Collar, failed to address Soresto's known and deadly risks. As early as 2015, just a few years after the collar entered the U.S. market, an EPA investigation found that among similar products, the Soresto collar, quote, ranked number one by a wide margin in terms of total incidents, major incidents, and deaths, even after factoring in companies' relative sales. Those findings weren't enough to drive the makers of Soresto Collar or the EPA to act. But in 2016, Canada's equivalent of the EPA, known as the PMRA, concluded, based on a review of the same American data available to the EPA, that the collar posed too great a risk to pets and their owners to be ever sold in Canada. Unfortunately, even as the death count rose, the EPA allowed Soresto to remain on the market here without even so much as requiring additional warning labels that regulators mandated in places ranging from Australia to Colombia to the European Union. The companies that manufactured the Soresto collar, first Bayer Animal Health and then later Elanco, were also aware of the risks, the incidents, and the deaths. But they too failed to act. Instead, they hired third-party industry insiders to conduct so-called independent reviews of the incident data, which ended up protecting their $300 million a year market, but ended up endangering pets. So the Soresto collar stayed the same, and so did the consequences. Today, we'll hear from witnesses who can speak about the Soresto collar, the fail failures of Bayer, Elanco, and the EPA, and the real cost of their collective choices. We'll also hear from the families of pets that wore the collars and suffered the ultimate consequences. As our witnesses today will testify, there is no perfect risk-free way of keeping our pets safe from every possible source of harm. That's the sad reality. But it is still possible to do all we can to protect the health and well-being of every pet. Sadly, our investigation has found evidence that the EPA and Elanco have failed to live up to that standard. That's why today I'm calling on the EPA to initiate notice of intent to cancel proceedings, which will ensure that a comprehensive review of Soresto and its risks is undertaken to determine what must be done. And in the meantime, to protect pets from further harm, I'm renewing my call for Elanco to do what the EPA cannot do immediately, and that's to institute a voluntary recall of the Soresto collar until comprehensive safety testing can be completed. Now, folks, this particular collar has caused 100,000 incidents reported to the EPA and over 2,500 pet deaths reported to the EPA. The steps that we are asking for today are crucial because it's important to protect our pets and our families too.